So today we're going to be talking about planer boards. Planer boards are an essential if you want to fish for trout in Lake Ontario in the months of April and May. It's really important that you understand how to fish planer boards if you want to be a good fisherman, an effective fisherman in the springtime. Um, early in the spring, all of the fish are on or near the surface and most of them are right near the shore. So. Um, Getting an effective spread out for these fish really requires that you be able to run multiple lines on the surface um, and in certain circumstances to get them away from the boat. Um, if you were fishing purely just flatlining behind the boat, the most rods you could really run is three or four. Um, with a planer board, you can run three or four rods off of each side of the boat and at least that many behind the boat as well. And you can do that without tangling. Um, and, and it's a really effective method of catching fish in the lake. So understanding planer boards is a huge part of being a successful fisherman in the lake in, in the first few months of the season. We've found that the best way to run a planer board is with a fixed planer. Um, this is an otter boat made by Big John. This is my favorite kind. I put a double keel on it. It pulls away from the boat nicely. Um, other varieties you can use are the Super Ski or the Amish Outfitters, and other guys even make their own out of wood. On our boat, we use an electric planer board reel. The two most popular brands are Cisco and Big John. I prefer the Cisco. Um, I find it's very durable, quiet, reliable, um, and fast. Once the planer board line is out, the next step is to get the lines out. Um, I put one line out at a time, and I try to put them out at fixed intervals. Um, I'll either do a certain number of pulls or a certain number of feet. Um, in the springtime, that can be as little as 60 feet or as much as 120 feet. Once you have your line out at the desired distance, then you um, wrap it around your finger. I usually do about six to eight wraps and then click it right into the release. I use clipper releases. They're adjustable so you can loosen them up in the spring, tighten them up in the summer when you're running copper or, or lead core. Um, and then I let them slide them down the planer board. Um, there are several other types of releases you can use. They're all pinch type releases. This is the Lorvik release. These are offshore pinch type releases, and then these are Scotty releases. Um, they all are the same principle. You can see in the video, we're able to run a lot of rods in the springtime. All of these rods are on or near the surface. In the spring, we typically run somewhere between 9 and 12 rods. Um, this shows a pretty typical setup in the spring. We have three rods off of the starboard side of the boat and three rods off of the um, port planer board and then we're running three rods off of downriggers on the back so that's nine. Another thing to keep in mind is that the angle of your rod matters. When we're setting up planer boards um, we try to leave each of our rods at a different angle. The rod on the outside is the one we stick furthest up. Um, the rod in the middle is pointing down a little bit more towards the water and then the rod that is closest to the boat is pointing furthest down. That prevents the tips of the rods from hitting each other and it also prevents the lines from tangling. Here's an example of a morning setup. It's fast forwarded obviously. Um, each rod is set out at a desired distance, um, then clipped on a release and slid down towards the board um, all the way to the end in, in the case of the outside rod. Um, let another rod out the same distance um, clip it into the release and slide it down um, a little bit closer to the boat this time, maybe about 10 to 15 feet apart. Um, and then you set the last rod out at the same distance again. And you again clip that right into the release and slide it down a little bit closer to the boat still this time, um, maybe about 15 or 20 feet closer to the boat than the previous one was and that's the basic way that we set up in the morning. Here's an example of what things look like when it's all set up. Three riggers and then three planers on each side. That's a pretty typical setup. Why do you think we're not catching the fish? Because they suck, I don't know. They should be here, right? They should. It's the theory. Driving over them. Uh-huh. Over here! As you can see, this fish hit on the middle rod and it pops off the release and then we're fighting the fish. 
So there's actually quite a bit more to using planer boards than I covered in this video. This is really just meant as a review for using top lines in the spring and early summer. Um, planer boards are a big, big part of doing multiple um, heavy sinking lines like copper and lead core a little bit later in the season, but um, they're very important for our spring fishery um, and getting to know how to use them is very important. Um, you have to be methodical, you have to be thoughtful about how you set them up, but if done properly, planer boards allow you to run a lot of lines um, and have very few tangles if done properly. So. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below in the comments, and I usually can get back to you pretty quickly. So, um, see you around.